<laughs> I love doing that. Um, what were you doing yesterday? What were you recording yesterday? Um, we did a. Are you cheating on me with other podcasts? Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. They have uh, the Safa. Uh, what is it? The Safa commercials? Safa? Oh. Uh, that's, that's the podcast commercials. You're not there yet, I don't think. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> no, 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 no commercials yet. Not yet. No, not yet. But including today, no. <laughs> ah. No, it's not yet. Uh, no, I was recording um, a mix for. Um, I always like record and just like hit record whenever I do most sets, like live or whatever, just to like listen back to them or whatever. Oh, okay. Um, but um, we did a pretty cool one on um, Friday the thirteenth uh, last month. It was for um, it was at Sub T with uh, the Rui Dosa Collective. It was uh, basically El Grito was going on that weekend, so everybody all weekend, all the ever everyone was celebrating. Just going crazy, it. yeah. <laughs> Normal <laughs> Chicago stuff, yeah, <laughs> especially in that neighborhood. Oh, absolutely! It was the whole block was just you know, and then I had to go in my room and go, all right, I got to pull out the flag. <laughs> 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 I'm like, all right, this is the it's it's time. But um, yeah, we played a set over there. Um, played an hour and a half, just a bunch of like Latin music, a bunch of like OG stuff for like all of us <laughs> yeah. just celebrating for the weekend it was a really good time but uh yeah i was recording that last night and just kind of like fixing up a couple things tightening it up but that'll be out probably like next week or two so you guys can listen to that yeah. nice so you and you do you post your sets on on youtube or do you or do you post them a lot of people do um i don't have the gear to do live stuff like that like i have tried it in the past and there's just like little pieces that i'm missing to make it happen like that but um <clears throat> uh not frequently but every so often if there's something like i'll have a good night and you know all the pieces are right there or something it was an opening set for a bigger act or whatever i'll usually get stuff together and you know record it if it sounds good i can master it and put it out but if there's parts where i'm like should probably not put that song out or maybe it's something that's unreleased or whatever that i don't want to share out or <laughs> stuff yeah it's just, not ready know, or or I just sure. screw up live and I don't want to share that. <laughs> that, uh, happens, that happens a lot more than people think. <laughs> I I know how that goes. Yeah. Um. So, I guess I should introduce you, right? We just kind of st- <laughs> we cold started that. Uh, welcome to another episode of My Violet Tendencies. I am, of course, marvelous Matt Nix. Uh, joining me this week is uh, my buddy Julian, who, uh, as we just kind of like jumped in there, uh, is a DJ, um, and. So when I, we'll we'll get to that point though, I want to talk about how how we met. I want to talk about our our origin story. <coughs> so uh, <laughs> I was racking my brain about this yesterday, and I was like, I had a general idea when we met, but I was like, I can't remember the exact time that we met. <laughs> I yeah, me as well, because I feel like it all kind of like is this is moving right in my face here. Um, so I believe. And this is through because I have terrible memory uh, when it comes to just recalling anything, uh, especially things that I say and do. As I, there we go. There he is. <laughs> um, so I was having a conversation with uh, our mutual friend Jacob Taus uh, of of the band East Moon, uh, and he, I believe, he was telling me that you you and him knew each other before right yeah we had met through like during 2020 i started working at a dispensary and i met my friend david there uh really awesome guy um we uh we bought it because of wrestling obviously hey. <laughs> um so i think when things started opening up back up and we were able to go to shows and i think we went to marionette park yeah right oh for uh aaw yeah yeah we went over there that bourbon was awesome. street um had a little too much to drink, but it was a good time. Hey. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I ended up meeting him there at a couple shows. Uh, we ended up going to a couple of rock shows, a couple of little random meetups. Uh, I think it went to with uh, I think with my friend David to uh, AEW a couple times, and J- I met Jacob because we were going to go meet up with them. He was, also had tickets in the same section. But uh, yeah, I also think like there's a couple times like we every time we kind of just ran across each other, I think we also like, but like we've been in the same room before a couple times. Oh yeah, yeah. definitely. <laughs> the, and, and especially when we met, like when we started, uh, doing business together at, at Emporium, I was like, every time I saw you, I was like, why do I feel like I know, know you? <laughs> like, I feel like I've, we've interacted in the past. And then it was just like, 
I like you said, like being in the same room together or just like maybe dealing with people, similar people in, mm. in each other's uh, fields. But <clears throat> Ooh, excuse me. But I remember uh, Jacob had mentioned that you had you were talking about wanting to do something uh, with wrestling at Emporium when you when you were working there. Uh, the Emporium Arcade Bar uh, here in Chicago, as well as many other locations across this country, I believe. But, um, and then he kind of just connected us, I believe, or something like that. Yeah, I, I um, think that's kind of how it went. I, I think for the most part, it was something along those lines. I basically had gone to, I kind of like, I didn't realize that I'd been to a freelance show before back when it was at the Abbey Pub. Oh yeah, it was one of the yeah, that was wild days. <laughs> People but, jumping uh, out of the balconies and. Was it you jumping out of the balcony? No, 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 no. <laughs> not, me. not me. I did see the one of you running to the chair. That one was nuts. Oh, moonsault. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh. I thought I broke my leg. That was awful. I felt the like, the the phantom pain in my legs through, like, through that like, video. <laughs> I was like, <gasps> <laughs> but um, I'd I'd seen that once, and then I think we had randomly through a couple friends. They were like, "Hey, there's indie shows that they throw at the auditorium," and I think around that time I just move or i was about to and then i went to one show and then we ended up going back again because we had just moved to the neighborhood so we were like all right we gotta go check this out and it was awesome <laughs> none of us knew what to expect like i mean coming from what we would normally go to is like shows where we know who's on the cards or whatever but seeing all the local people and seeing how crazy good everybody was <laughs> and how <laughs> awesome the crowd was it was just i think after after that one we were pretty much hooked so we started going a lot and then um Around that time, I had transitioned jobs to Emporium, so I was handling their events and, you know, helping them figure out their marketing, social media, all the fun stuff. Um, but when I was working there, I kind of like, I think as soon as I got that job, I think the first thing I said, I was like, we're going to do a show there. Like, we, I, I'm, <laughs> we're going to figure it out. I'm gonna, we're going to put a ring in there. And I think the person who worked there before is like, you're you're nuts. It's not going to happen. <clears throat> and look, look at where at you us, guys are at now. <laughs> look at us now, Dad. <laughs> Learned it from watching you. Um <laughs> But uh, yeah, no, I went to a couple shows, and I remember I got to the show, and I remember I, I met you because you were at a table, and you were um, you were talking to people, shaking hands, kissing babies, you know, doing the whole thing. Oh God, um, the worst time to like ever like talk to me. I feel like at a show, I kind of got the vibe too, because uh, you were like pretty short, but you were like, "Hey, what's up? Cool, all right, uh, good to meet you." And then after a while, I was like, I was like, um, I was like, Matt Nix, right? You're like, yes. <laughs> so I remember going home and like looking you up and being like looking more into it i think it just shot you guys a dm and we ended up doing a walkthrough we did oh a, yeah we did another walkthrough because i had to convince my owners that you guys were not gonna kill anybody <laughs> or, or break anything or, or break or... anything <laughs> which i i think from no, talking to you guys enough and after the first two or the, even the first one i think i just realized i was like you guys know what you're doing we're like this is not going to be an issue at all which was awesome <laughs> thankfully and, uh, yeah it was it was it was uh <laughs> it was really cool to see like I don't know. Everyone kept thanking me for some reason, and I got really weird about it. I was like, I didn't do anything. I just like asked them to do it, and it was a cool thing we're bringing to the, the bar. So enjoy it. <laughs> Shoot, yeah. And uh, yeah, it's been history since. I think uh, I see you at shows more. I think we see each other just at random nights in general, and going to the shows and stuff. And yeah, just texting random random memes in the middle of the day. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, so. for, and it, it it was just crazy too, because like I feel like for a while we were on such like crazy schedules that like. Uh, just trying to get a hold of each other was like, oh yeah, <laughs> like play, literally playing phone tag. But um, <clears throat> you mentioned, so you mentioned obviously being into wrestling and stuff. Uh, I'm gonna ask you one of those weird uh, formal questions now. Uh, what do you remember uh, your first uh, memories of being a fan of professional wrestling? <laughs> but uh, yeah, like something like along those lines, you know, your your early favorites and stuff like that. Um, I. J- there's like a couple key ones that if I th- if I really like think back like where I'm like, what is this and this is super interesting and being like, really like drawn into it. Um, well, obviously I had three older brothers, so like it was always on. I mean, there was the whole '80s era leaning into like the '90s and then like the Attitude Era and all that stuff. Um, so obviously we were watching that. Like when our parents would like go out for like a night, they're like, all right, we're going out. Like you, the older one, watch the smaller ones. Whatever. Yeah. Um, we'd always be like wait like 30 minutes and you're like all right roll rumble go to, and you go to the parents bed and you just all right everyone, <laughs> everyone run it as a different character when you get out you gotta wait 30 seconds and yeah we would do that all the time and we just i think we th- my brother threw us into like the 
the sliding um, oh the sliding uh, the, door the, the, the mirror closet. door <sighs> yeah we broke it it, was, oh. <laughs> it like went in and we're all like <laughs> like oh, immediate shit. just like all right we gotta chill but then that was just that just snowballed into us watching it every day and um yeah and then even like i think before that was like um we would always stay over at our grandparents' house on my dad's side, like, just randomly all the time. It'd be like, hey, like, you know, it'd be like, I mean, we're a Mexican family, so we're up till 2, 3 in the morning. <laughs> yeah, on a normal day. <laughs> on a Wednesday night before school. And I guess we were all up. It was like a Thursday or Friday or something like that. And my parents basically were like, all right, we're going to go. Everyone go. And we're like, ah, we don't want to leave. And, you know, they're all like, yeah, just let them stay, whatever. They'll, we'll put blankets out in the living room. We'll hang out. But I remember we'd do that, and then, like, the next morning we'd wake up, and my grandpa would, like, always leave early for work, and he would always come home. Like, we'd all, because we're kids, we'd sleep in all day, and our grandma's like, whatever, just clean and yeah. take a nap, whatever. <laughs> yeah, but then, those uh, were the days. Oh, my God, it was so good. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, my grandpa would come home, and I remember he would always just put on TV and, like, watch all this stuff. But, like, he would always have, like, the, um, like, CMLL or, like, AAA would be on or whatever was, whatever was playing on the time, and then it was always just, like, you know. I think that was the first time I started like really being into like luchadors and masks and stuff. I was just like, "What the? They're Power Ranger dudes, like dude, they, they yeah, all got all the colors. That one's a Ninja Turtle, like <laughs> yeah, literally. There <laughs> definitely was Ninja Turtles. <laughs> oh, the copyright infringement is crazy, but uh, <laughs> nah, they, um, they didn't care. It doesn't exist down there. Um, <laughs> but basically, um, yeah, I would watch that all the time, and then I think like I stopped watching it for a while. I don't know. It was just like. I, just, I don't know what it was. I just kind of just stopped watching it for a while. And then I remember like one summer, my, my two cousins, like Andy and uh, Peanut, we call them Peanut, his name's Robert, but hmm. um, they were always like at our house because they were just like, you know, we were all in the neighborhood and it was the summertime, so they were around the same age. But I remember there was one time they were like, hey, are you watching wrestling? And I was like, no, I don't watch wrestling anymore. What are you talking about? But then they were like, oh no, there's like new wrestlers now and like they have normal names. And they're, like, they're, just, <laughs> they're all normal sizes and somewhat, but uh and then it was like WrestleMania like nineteen on GameCube, and oh, we would damn. just like make characters like all summer long to like five six in the morning, just whatever we could make, and just like that was like the most where I was like really into it. And I think those are like my earliest like where I was like, okay, this is awesome, and like I can appreciate this and watching every other day. And that's definitely like core memory unlocked right now. Like thinking yeah. back on like uh, for me, it was. Growing up playing Nintendo 64 and playing uh, WCW, NWO Revenge, mm-hmm. uh, WWF Attitude, and then it was like No Mercy, all those games. Uh, but yeah, just staying up all night, like with, with especially in the summer, like having sleepovers with all the kids on the block and just staying up and trying to beat the title title mode. It was like yeah. a, giant, a long, <laughs> super long gauntlet mode to win the titles, and it was just... Uh, like that was all that was like all we cared about like it was just like we got to beat this thing and like oh like i missed i missed those days but it like those are like core memories of like becoming a fan of wrestling because i think about too like when i i remember like playing the game so vividly and then like watching wrestling and then watching it as i grew up and then going back and watching stuff that i didn't see initially like when i Mm -hmm. first started watching and then seeing a lot of those guys uh like from the game that like i'll be like oh there's you know there's so and so and and like just it was fun to kind of be like oh i'm watching matches of these characters that i was playing with that i didn't really know when i was playing the game like as yeah. a kid and now like watching them as a as an adult and being like oh they're like actual like wrestlers yeah. and uh i don't know that's kind of cool yeah like uh midian's just not a naked character <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realize that was a real thing. Then I got older. I was like, oh, that, that happened. All right. <laughs> Dude, the Midian thing is crazy, too. Like, when they, like, sacrificed him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, they did, like, a whole sacrifice on TV. And oh, man. That, like, Undertaker stuff was crazy back then, too. It was terrifying as a kid. That was, like, the, the one thing. Cause my, my brother, Eric, was always super into that. Because you could do the eye thing. And I was oh, like, the- stop it, you know? But, um... Yeah, he was he was like super obsessed with that, and I remember like us watching that. Like, at, we was like our house on the east side of like Aurora, like our first house we all lived in together. And I remember us all being in the living room. My dad was asleep on the couch, like after work, just like construction. Sure, just like I'm tired. Yeah, just <laughs> but, you stop moving and you fall asleep. It's like all right, everyone just relax. And then we're all watching it, and we're like watching like what was it? Uh, was it when Austin was getting pulled up? <laughs> and they were just, oh, like, on the cross thing. Oh, when he oh, was like God. crucified. Yep. <laughs> I don't think we I don't think he, I don't think we got in trouble for that, but we probably should have. <laughs> <laughs> there was so much stuff that I was like I remember like I never got in trouble for like 
what was on wrestling, mm-hmm. but like certain wrestling, my mom would be like, you have to watch that and go watch that on the TV in our room. So like your brother can't see it. Cause I have, I have a little brother. And, um, so like whenever I was watching like, the, like the ECW's TV show and yeah. stuff like that, like that, I'd have to watch that on in the, in the bedroom and stuff like that. But <clears throat> I don't remember. I remember arguing with my grandma about, <laughs> about wrestling being not, not fake. And she'd just be like, it's fake. It's fake. Like she would just talk, like, and she's like an old school Mexican lady too. So she's just like, like her, like her opinion is, is, is what's right. And everything else is, doesn't matter. And, uh, well, it's true. You know that, right? Yeah. Well, clearly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I would be like, we'd be like watching it and there'd be something happen, and, and like, uh, somebody would get hit with a chair and I would just look at her. I go, see grandma, you can't fake that. You can't fake getting hit with a chair. And she's like, it's a prop. It's a prop. And you know what, Grandma? I'm going to tell you this right now. It's not a prop chair. <laughs> it's not a prop chair. I know that for a fact. You can ask your shins from the moonsault. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, I'll just send her that clip. Just, just, You should just have that one just roll here, just on a loop. Like, no audio, but we can just have the... Do, 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 do. Make it a Shooting Stars video. <laughs> <laughs> God, I'm not that good at editing yet, but we'll we'll get there. Not yet, not yet. <laughs> maybe I'll, I maybe if I I need to hire somebody like a producer. I need a producer. If anybody wants to be my producer, hit me up. Uh, I can't really pay you, but I could probably hook you up with free T-shirts. Firm handshake and direct eye contact. Oh yeah, you can. It's about what you can go with now. <laughs> what was that? What was the what was the earliest uh, for you for that you remember watching it? Um. Or, you know, I feel like so. I I feel like my earliest memory. I don't think it was live when I watched it, but was it was watching uh, WCW Halloween Havoc nineteen ninety seven. Uh, at one. yes, in uh, this is when I was in I was in Florida, and my cousin had it on like a bootleg VHS tape, and we were watching it, and I was like specifically i i remember obviously the uh, the Eddie and Ray uh yeah. the Eddie Ray match and uh <clears throat> Ray looking like a power ranger like you said power yeah. ranger and i'm like dude this guy he had the whole full purple suit and i swear that's not that's not uh that has nothing to do with this um <laughs> but the whole purple suit i'm like dude this guy looks like a power ranger like that uh, that was my obsession at the time and i was like super into it and from that point on, like I was like super sucked in on wrestling, but like specifically only like WCW for first, I didn't even know there was other wrestling that existed. And like I would go to school and some of my friends would be like, oh, did you see what happened on Raw? And I'd be like, what's Raw? Mm-hmm. I have no idea. And they'd be like, you, or you don't know like Stone Cold and The Rock? And I, I was like, nope, had no idea. Like literally, just didn't even know that there was another channel with wrestling on it. Yeah. <laughs> and then <laughs> once I did, it was game over. Like yeah. I'm like, holy shit! And then for me, I get I get when I get interested in something, I dive super hard headfirst into like I need to know everything about this. Oh yeah, hundred percent. And like spe- then specifically with wrestling, obviously it started with that. But just like as I as I've gone on in life, just anything that's become like even a slight obsession i'm just like i i can't just be like slightly into something i have to be like obsessed with it <laughs> yeah if you're gonna you gotta be all in on stuff if you're gonna that's why i feel like a lot of people now like like a lot of hobbies are so passive now so it's yeah like, it's always really interesting when you find somebody or like somebody that you know is like i'm doing this new thing and this is something i'm really into and i think i get excited for friends when they do that yeah <laughs> like, you know i do too I've, I've, i'll be like oh hell yeah dude like Cause then it, to me, I get to like live vicariously through them mm-hmm. and be like, Hmm, maybe I would be into that. And then I think about it and I go, nah, yeah, <laughs> but I'm glad for <laughs> That's them. Not my thing, but it's good for them. <laughs> but I'm glad for them. <laughs> yeah. That whole pop-up game from like the last couple of years was like that big boom right after 2020. Like everybody started or not everybody, but lots of like chefs and people who were trying to figure out that things started doing their own pop-ups and yeah doing like vendors and a lot of those people now have like brick and mortars now <laughs> dude like that uh smashy burrito guy yeah we just dude we just went there on saturday actually oh, literally the best 
and and he, like the coolest dude ever. Oh, dude, <laughs> I I want to I want to like be friends with him. And like the last time we went, uh, I was wearing just like a random shitty hoodie, but a, but one that I made here mm-hmm. at work. And it was like a custom one with like I used, for a while I was taking like screenshots of like Dragon Ball Z manga, yeah. uh, like frames and like putting them on T-shirts and stuff. So I had like this like image from the manga like on a hoodie, and he was like, "Oh shit! Like that's so cool! Like where like where'd you get that?" And I was like, "I made it." <laughs> and then obviously that like that stems like, oh, "How did you make that?" And then like, talk about this place, talk about freelance, and uh, I want to like. I wanted to like reconnect with them, but because I was like, dude, we gotta like figure out a way that we can have them sell in food at our shows. Oh, 100 percent. Or yeah. like s- something how that would work. So I'll I gotta text them right after this. For oh you. shit! That would be <laughs> that would be awesome. Little plug for you. No. Um, <laughs> uh, shout out Smashy Burrito. Yeah, hell yeah. Uh, we just had that on Saturday. Um, it's it's been like a month or two since I've had his food before, but like. They have that and like chips now, and he actually has like a full kitchen that he's working out of. Uh, mm. Desert Hawk, go check him out. They got a permanent residency now. Oh, I did see that. Yes, that's the one. They got a permanent residency there now, so he's got a full kitchen, so he can really do like his full like menu how he wants to do it, which is like, and it's super cool. You can just order the bar, they give you a ticket, you just wait for it and you're wherever you're at. It's like that's amazing. Super smooth. And for those of you that don't know, uh, a smashy burrito is like it's a burger, but like instead of like buns, it's like like fried smash plantains yeah um and it's it's so good it's it's incredible even if that sounds a little weird i promise you it's gonna be good everyone always gets really worried it's gonna be super greasy and a burger is gonna be greasy but mm. the 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 hebrito like the the fried plantain how he has it like i did the same thing i was like i haven't had this in a while it's gonna be greasy and i took it and i was like oh my god it's perfect <laughs> oh dude it's so good but yeah that's um, that's been super. That's oh man, I'm t- I'm stuck on food now, but <laughs> I mean, that's good. I've been like eating better. Uh, I've been I I fresh. There's that store Fresh Time over here yeah. on Elston. Um, a little bougie, but they had this like bin of like these like ready made like frozen meals that are like low calorie, uh, high protein kind of thing. And they are like low key, like the best thing ever. And they were on sale, so I bought like a, a bunch of them. And it's like <laughs> chicken and chicken and sausage gumbo, like salmon, um, sam like mustard and something, uh, smoked salmon. And it's incredible. Throw it in the microwave or the or the oven for a couple minutes. And I was always big. I I didn't really gotten like prefix meals like that, but I was like, I this is my first like, time. Yeah. I think the closest I ever got to that was like a, we did like Hello Fresh for a little while. Yeah, that was pretty cool. I Actually, love that. Like, I, I, for, I don't know why I haven't been doing that lately. I've been not been cooking a lot lately. I've just been so busy, you know, with everything else. And but I always think about that. I'm like, I'll get home and I'm like, oh, I probably should have just cooked. <laughs> like, I just think about it pretty often, and I'm like, all right, I need to be a little bit better about my my eating habits because yeah, no, I feel the same way sometimes. Hold on, hold on one second. I gotta. All right. Well. <laughs> Back from that commercial break, <laughs> I was like trying to fix my hair, and uh, <laughs> then I was like, "Oh, it doesn't fucking matter," because uh, we lost the video. <laughs> I forgot to empty the memory card, but that's okay. <coughs> we'll get there. I've been there before. Trust me. <laughs> it have wor- We've had worse, worse uh, malfunctions. I guess. What do you think? What's like the worst uh, like technical? snafu that you've had like for a dj set or something where you're just like fuck <sighs> there's a couple that's that's tough to pinpoint <laughs> they're like it happens so often that's that's me at shows sometimes where i'm just like we fucking everything's set up everything's ready to go we're all pumped hey where's the ring bell <laughs> fuck I do remember that one actually. So many times. <laughs> so it's happened multiple times to the point where I bought an extra ring bell that I keep permanently in the trunk of my car at all times for the event that we forget a ring bell again because I will f- refuse to let that happen again. That's the way to do it, man. You just got <laughs> I have so many doubles of things now where I'm like, you're never leaving this bag. I'm, just, <laughs> I'm, like, you're ne- I'm never going to forget this again. Um, yeah, the, I guess the. I ha- okay, well, one was, it didn't, like, ruin everything, but it happened right before I had to start. 
and it just like killed my whole mood. <laughs> I had one time I was it was, uh, it was Crocodile in Wicker Park. I think it's dist- it's district now. Oh, I forgot about Crocodile. They you know, those fish bowls they used to have there. That was, a, that was an era. But uh, they had a basement and. The big thing back then was like everyone wanted to DJ the basement because it was always packed and they had this really cool like light bright up wall thing and it was just it was decent money, so a lot of people were like together. So there was one night where I was like, all right, cool, I'm gonna be able to play down there. I'm gonna get some decent money tonight. It's gonna be great. And I put my laptop up like on the mm-hmm. on the stand, nothing plugged into it, and obviously like I'm like still getting set up. So I go back to my bag and a guy like reaches over the booth and he's like, hey dude, and he's like, hey, can you uh. And right, this is even before he, I didn't even get, he didn't even tell me what he asked. I just felt something bump into my foot and I already knew it was my computer. <laughs> <laughs> so just, it landed like a notebook, just like a, like a, like a tent just right down. And oh. as soon as I pull it up, I just see like the biggest crack down the side of it. And, you know, I could have like freaked out, but I think the dude was just like, I think I saw the terror in his face because you could tell he was so mortified. That yeah, it <laughs> that's like a tough one because you're just like, I know you didn't do that on purpose, but fuck you, dude. Yeah, it's like, I think, I don't know. It was one of the, like, that was like the start of it for that computer. And then like that happened. It wasn't the end of the world. I moved on. It, I still used it for like over a year. But I remember there was one time where I had to do, I had to play at Exit. And I'm like, Mm. three in the morning oh my god i can smell it like just after saying the word uh, <laughs> but uh uh yeah i had to play there one night and that same computer just like would randomly just completely disconnect like it would just like i would get straight bars it would just go black mm-hmm. and it happened in the middle of like a full dance floor of like maybe like 100 people 100 <laughs> people everyone's just waiting for the drop and it just never came oh i didn't even get there it was like <laughs> it was like drop happened and it's like and just complete dead air and everyone just like stops moving and i didn't know what to do so like i'm like screaming at like the other guy who was like the other dj who's like he's hanging out at the bar at the time i'm like get over here please but he ended up coming over and like taking over the rest of the night and i was just like yeah my, my thing's cooked i can't do anything with this but uh is that one um i guess like the worst one maybe not like hmm I think it was the best one because like how it got handled afterwards, and I think that worked the best. But like, I had like one night where it was at Slope on a Friday, and it was like fully packed, like body to body in the in the whole bar, and it was super hot in the middle of the summer, so everyone's already a little annoyed that it's hot. But you know, they're still sure. dancing and drinking and adding to their problem. But <laughs> especially at Slope, <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah. But uh, we had um, there was one guy there and he was trying to put his drink like over the ledge like if you don't know what it looks like like, there's a booth in the middle it's like kind of like raised booth looks like it looks like a like a christmas lodge basically like a like a like a ski lodge it looks like a like to me it looks like the like a judge's chair yeah (laughs) almost like in a courtroom it's just like you're up there and like this like like on this podium yeah, I gotta be. I'm gonna start wearing. A, I'm gonna start bringing a gavel for denying requests from Dude, or no. for fingers to go up there. Like, yeah, <laughs> so or someone's drinks. Yeah, pretty. Yeah, that that was the one. Like he he. It was like it wasn't full, so I was thankful for that. But like he tried to put his drink up there, and as soon as he puts it up there, he like it kind of went over the lip of it, and it just completely knocked like the 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 hub like the USB net connector like right out of my computer. So just <laughs> music mm-hmm. just completely stops, and I think like. I didn't realize what happened at first, and I'm freaking out because I'm like, all right, this is everyone's. Then everyone starts, everyone's singing booing. the words to a song, but then they realize the song's not playing anymore, and then they just start booing. And I mean, I can handle boos, but like, I was more so just trying to get everything set back in. Once I figured it out, I was like, okay, it's just got to load. I just got to let this 20 seconds, whatever. But then it started doing like the, you know, like the the freaking Hogan thing, where I was like, come on, just like give it what's the this the best you got like come on and i was like doing that and then eventually i was just like flipping people off <laughs> yeah <laughs> just because they were being like it was like we all kind of understood yeah this shit happens but then they were know. the the booze booze yeah when they're drunk and they're just like fuck you we just want music we don't care whose fault it is <laughs> they weren't saying boo urns they were yeah. not saying boo urns um but yeah no isn't it being like the song came back on everyone chilled the hell out and then we kind of like jump right back in no problem but i was like all right that was one of the worst ones but i was like the recovery was like nobody cared <laughs> after service thank goodness 
but it doesn't happen very often. A lot of times it's like, you know, most most bar managers actually it's actually hilarious because the bar manager like ran up was because everything good. I'm like, I just fixed it. It's okay. But <laughs> a good bar manager will usually like you'll see them sprinting across the room just like, <laughs> I'm here. Like, What's going on? Because they're terrified the bar is gonna have to close for some reason. You're like, no, 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 no. It's fine. Just a weird little whatever. But thankfully they're cool over there, so it was a good time. <laughs> Hell yeah. Are you still doing slope every Friday or? Yeah. Um, I've been there about a year last April. I've been there with um, Johnny Walker. It's uh, it's originally his night, uh, Super Friends, every Friday at Slippery Slope. He's been running that party for um, a little under a decade now. But uh, that, yeah, he's been holding it down for years. That's uh, that's the OG. That's the homie. Um, yeah, yeah. He brought me on uh, about a year and a half ago. Um, the guy who was doing it before, Travis, really, really good DJ also. Like, I think he just like, you know, he's looking to do more stuff, kind of hang more at home and be more of a homebody and stuff and kind of take a break. He's been, he'd been grinding for so long too. All those guys. I know the feeling. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, you know, I think there was a couple times, like I would just go there randomly just to hang out cause he was a good dude and I liked the music he played. We'd work together in Porium and stuff. And I think even before that, just like random nights, I'd just go say what's up. He's like, come hang out, just sit in the booth, watch him DJ for a couple hours. But, um. There was like one night I just got done and he was like, you want to hop on? I was like, right now? He's like, yeah. I'm like, okay. And I bombed like terribly. Oh, no. <laughs> I bombed so bad. It was actually hilarious because like, he's like, I'm going to give you 30 minutes. And he's like, if you're, if you're struggling, like, just let me know. It's fine. It's not a big deal. And I was like, all right, fine. But then I think it was like something I was playing and I turned around and I was like, get on, get, get back on. Hurry up, please. <laughs> like, I'm getting killed out here. But, um, We're, well, how does, so how does that work then? Like, when uh like when you bomb as a dj like what's what does bombing look like as a, as a dj uh i mean I is mean, it booze like i mean it's just like it's you can tell when a crowd turns you know when they're just not feeling it you know and they're just disinterested like that's a big thing a lot of people fail to realize about like djing is like you don't just go in and just like i'm playing all this all night like a good dj like some nights will let you do that and those nights are very niche but the nights that most general public people who want to go out and just hear everything and party and have a good time like they usually want to hear like everything so like if you're not like versatile and you can't like read a crowd and you know okay how many people we got in here all right what's the demo more girls more guys all right there's a bachelorette party over there there's clearly a girls night going on over here clearly these dudes are trying to pick up girls but they're not going to dance until the girls start dancing yeah you know, oh like, that's interesting so you're kind of doing like recon over the room if you ever watch me when i'm djing i'm constantly like I, I don't look like i'm having fun all the time sometimes i do which I, I have fun when i do but a lot of the times i'm like just scanning like terminator style just like, <laughs> just like trying to pick it apart like all right here's this person this is this person all right that crew is about to leave because they want to hear taylor swift we just played it they're gonna leave as soon as i play that you know like not always playing taylor <laughs> swift but you know that sounds like eerily similar to like when i'm a heel on a show <laughs> and I do kind of the same thing is I'll look into the crowd and just look for people. I'm like, okay, who can I fuck with? Yeah. <laughs> who can, and I'm like, okay, that guy, that guy's got a hat on. I'm going to walk over there and slap his hat off of his head. And just like, <laughs> kind of like, kind of the same thing. Like, like you, you, you know, you see a group of girls, you like, Oh, Hey, hey sweetheart, you like these muscles? <laughs> like, just like, you know, talking shit. Um, it's a less eloquent way of uh watching the crowd like yeah. that, as as a dj set would be but i don't know i'd be messing with people all the time there's like there's times when i do that i just like like my big like something that i've been like really enjoying doing is cause, like i don't know if you're familiar with like serato or like dj software at all not really no so basically like in the last couple of years there's been like new technology that comes out now so like you can break down like if you're playing and i got this song and this song like i got carry on my wayward son whatever mm -hmm. i can load it in my software now and it in like instant instantly if you have a good computer it'll break down the entire track in a vocal melody bass and drums oh shit so like that's the that that has actually been like such a cool thing lately because like for a long time i was just like i was really focused on just blending and being a good dj and then i didn't want to upgrade my computer to be able to use that software and i finally did it and it was like day and night, like it changed the whole way, like how I approach it and stuff. But like, again, the big thing is like, you're in the middle of a song of how you're playing it. And you're like, I want to take the bass line and the guitar from this other song. So I'm going to take this one out and I'm going to layer this other one in. Or like, there's a lot of times where there's like, think of like a song that has like a terrible intro or it's just somebody talking. 
like you can completely just omit that and just cut the vocals out and have an instrumental or like you know you can take the drums from deaf tones and put it into like sexy red or something (laughs) Uh, (laughs) dude but that's so cool though and that's the shit that like when you're when you're out and you're just like like just looking to have a good time and you're just like you hear a song start and then it it morphs into a different song and you're just like oh shit like that's crazy that wordplay that's me at least oh it's that's that's kind of like that sound when people do i mean and, and i guess it's a pop right that's what you're going that's <laughs> yeah. what you're going for yeah the i guess pop. like you get when you get that like it's like i always tell people that's like the best feeling like i don't i don't know how else to describe it i'm like whatever the thing that you love that makes you feel the happiest and you're just like oh this is the best feeling ever like that's what that's like for me when it comes to djing so like i guess can i get back to your question like what is like what are, we, what are we asking about? I don't even know if I asked the question. You're asking me about Sir. <laughs> I talked about Serato because you're asking me like what I'm what it's something that like I do that like how did I lose my train of thought already? Goodness. <laughs> I guess it happens. Okay. <laughs> well, now now I'm stuck I'm stuck in a rut for now. <laughs> no, that's okay. That sounds like a pretty uh <coughs> oh, excuse me. Um like that sounds like it would be a fun program to just like play around with, like for like isolating vocal tracks and stuff. Like I follow a lot of TikTok uh, channels that like mm-hmm. will do that. They'll like isolate like Freddie Mercury vocal tracks on Queen songs, and oh, it's yeah. just like incredible. It needs no mastering; it's perfect on its own. Right? Yeah, he just has he just has it. I remember what it was. Uh, you were asking like I was saying how I mess with like screw like mess with people. Oh yeah. Sets. <laughs> uh, so again, just because of that, I'm able to like do little mashups on the fly all the time so i always mm-hmm. like to do random ones like this past weekend I, like one that i've been doing a lot lately is i play like the Wii shop theme song just in a random set with like a different hip-hop song over it or something vocals and the amount of people who are like why the hell are you playing this right now but the amount of people who are like in the car singing along to it like in the middle of a a full dance floor like it's just the best yeah those especially like those niche ones like that where you're just like it. It's either gonna confuse someone, which is awesome, mm-hmm. or they're gonna pop for it, which is even better. Yeah, that's like my. That's I feel like we have a very similar sense of humor when it comes to that. Like, is like, oh, I'll like, I'll think, I'll do something like that. That's like, oh, this is weird, but it's funny to me. And I'm like, if you laugh at it too, then that's awesome. But I don't care because yeah. it's funny to me. <laughs> I mean, that's what it is. I mean, there's a. I think for a lot of years, I took it way too seriously, where I was like. I guess when I was coming up, it was a lot of people who were like doing like bass music and like were more like underground artists or whatever. Like, but I think to me, like when I was watching other people do stuff, I was like, oh, you got to be like, you're a DJ. You have to be like mysterious and cool and like can't be too obvious about it. But then after a while, like I think the last few years, I kind of just started laughing at myself a little bit more because, you know, I just realized it's more fun. People enjoy it more and you know it's, it's, yeah. it's okay to have fun while you're DJing I don't yeah. know, like, oh, take it so seriously all the time there's definitely and we, there's in wrestling too like you see those <coughs> those guys that are just like you're good. come on man like just chill like read like a lot of times it's like read the room like there's a time and a place to kind of like present yourself in that way <clears throat> and it's just like dude like if you're just like grinding like you don't have to like I don't know. Like, it, don't be such a tryhard. I guess I don't know. Like, to, like I yeah. feel like people can people could snip it out. Yeah, and like that's that's I think over the I think in like my experience in the last uh, I've been doing this what four, 13, 14 years something like that now since I've like like legitimately actually like maybe like professionally maybe ten years but I think in all the time that I've done that like that's something that you just learn to watch out for and like just learn to just be conscious of and. You know, there's always some people who are going to be that way and, you know, a little try hardy and just doing a little too much. But I mean, I kind of just I, those people are always going to be around. So I just kind of say, yeah, they're going to be in their lane. I'm just going to be in my lane. And it is what it is. Yeah. No, no. Yeah. Just you do your thing. I do my thing. But uh, my thing's more fun. I hope it is. I try to make it fun. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it's if it's fun or not. Are you having fun? Uh, This last year. Yeah. Um, I think for a couple of years there was like I took like a little lull for a little while. I think it was really busy with like you know i was doing the stuff at emporium and doing a lot of bookings and a lot of other people's events and nights and stuff and i think i hit a point where i was kind of like you know what i'm doing a lot of stuff for other people i kind of want to do some stuff for me and then i think the last year i really really like took a big deep dive into like djing more often djing more places like making like a checklist of like i want to play here i want to do this and 
slowly chipping away at that but i think doing it that way and like making a plan and like actually being like hey let's just like stop thinking about this too much and just have fun and go play out some like there's a thing that a lot of people do with like oh i have to go to dj i have to go dj here i have to go dj here but like i guess it kind of changed it in my head the last couple of, like I, the last couple of months really where i'm just like you get to go dj you know yeah like people yeah. say that all the time. i've heard people say it before but i think i could start <coughs> really doing that and like i guess it kind of happens sometimes with wrestling too you could say it, right you know like oh yeah definitely definitely i i would say like you said, I kind I like for myself. Like I, it's very well documented. I guess at this point, how, how I was really burnt out and just like I was like I hate wrestling. Yeah. I just I don't want. I was like I don't want to do anything with it and just like I needed a break and didn't really see that coming back. But you know, this year has been like really weird and now I like I have that mindset. Like you said, I get to wrestle now. Like I'm I'm like I'm lucky to be able to do it because you know there's so many people that I guess don't get that opportunity to, mm-hmm. to kind of, you know, quote unquote, live their dreams. And, you know, if I, if I would look back at like, you know, 10 year old me, he would probably be like, dude, like, this is awesome. Like whatever you're doing, like you're, you're literally doing whatever, what we said we were going to do when we were like mm-hmm. in third grade and shit, you know, all the way going back to watching Rey Mysterio and, and yeah. stuff. Now, <laughs> now you're the power ranger. And, now it's your job to to inspire maybe not inspire but like you know maybe influence somebody else to to take on that that mantle of like living their dream like mm-hmm. whether it's becoming a wrestler or you know doing something else becoming a dj mm-hmm. you know you inspire people just by and i didn't really think about this until like recently and it's like you people people will tell you shit like this all the time. People will be like, "Oh, dude, it's so cool what you're doing, right?" People people will say to you like, "Man, you're DJing. You're really like, you know, doing it. You're really doing it." And people would say that to me about wrestling, and I would just kind of like, kind of not scoff, but be like roll my eyes and be like, "Yeah, yeah, no, it's really cool." Just because I know how fucking bullshit it is all yeah. the time, <laughs> and I'm just like, "Man, if you really knew how how awful it is, or just how like not fun it can be," mm-hmm. but like. On the flip side, it can be super fucking cool and like awesome, and like you get a lot of really cool opportunities. And you know, to see to see it from somebody else's perspective like that, sometimes it's like uh, it changes it, and you're just like, damn, like this is really cool. And I am fucking lucky that I get to to do this, you know, that I have, you know, the means and the opportunity to be able to do it. Because there's even guys that that would love to wrestle still and and are like hurt and can't do it anymore, and. You know, I feel like you you kind of owe it to them to to just keep going. Yeah, I don't know. That's a hundred percent. Like, um, I think uh, the more we talk about it, I knew I had a feeling we were gonna get to this. Like when I when you when you invited me on, I was like, something's gonna happen, something's gonna be said, and I'm gonna blurt it out. But I'm like, I always tell my girlfriend this all the time. I'm like, we watch wrestling all the time. Like she. She literally just watches it, I think, more than me now sometimes. <laughs> but uh, it's addicting. We started like talking about it, and like a lot of times I'll come home and I'll vent, or you know, I was like, oh, this is happening, or I'm trying to make this happen, or we're working on getting this show and gonna record and do this. And I met this person, this person, and a lot of times we talk, and she's like, why does it just sound like like wrestling? <laughs> <It's> <laughs> just like, like, what are you talking about? She's like, every DJ is a character. Everyone's got their own gimmick and their own style. And I was like, some people are bullshit. Some people are really cool. <laughs> like, you got to think about it. It's like, everyone's got their own moveset. And I was like, that's it's you're right. Everything, <laughs> dude, everything is wrestling. It is. Or re- wrestling is everything. Yeah. Either way, like, uh, it's, it's, it's kind of wild when you, when you, I mean, that's how I, like, I watch football that way. Yeah. And I like, like, I love football. Like I love watching the game, but like, there's like storylines that happen mm-hmm. like throughout the season. They're like, oh, so and so is mad at his team, so he's requesting a trade, and then so follow the drama between that, and then also you know this guy's moving to a new team, so it's like this team is like desperate for, you know, like Aaron Rodgers going to the the Jets. Now yeah. it's like, oh, the Jets are on their this is like their last hurrah to like try to ma- be relevant. And same thing with Rodgers, you know, trying to prove that he's not an old man and everybody else is just rooting for them all to fail because yeah. <laughs> they hate them. And it's just like you can uh, there's a there's a Bleacher Report does like uh, a, these shorts every like week called uh, Gridiron Heights, uh, Gridiron Heights. 
and it's like a, a quick little flash video of like the weekly storylines of like football. Here's and the tea, everybody. Yeah, basically, <laughs> but it's like animated in like this funny little video where all, like, all the football players live in this like town together. <laughs> and uh, they did some like wild ones last like last year where it would like like the Christmas episode that one they did was like uh, because like it was the first year they did football games on Christmas. <laughs> so the, so it was uh, it was a diehard parody and Lamar Jackson was uh, was uh, you know, uh, Bruce, Bruce Willis Bruce Willis's character <laughs> and it was the all these NBA stars showing up to like uh, hijack the NFL players to be like Christmas is our day and you guys are coming trying to take over our spot and uh, it's just it's silly and but it's incredible and it like <laughs> if, if you watch like football and you follow along to like what's going on in in the league that like all these like little like one liner jokes throughout the video then the videos are only like a minute long yeah. if that and uh it's just like it's really silly and funny <laughs> but it's wrestling it's like it's it's like basically pro wrestling it's all becoming that now who was hans gruber i don't know was it santa was it uh, santa trying to santa and the elves trying to take back the players or was another team trying to no it was like it was like lebron james and like a bunch of nba guys like trying to like trying to like take over take back christmas for them (laughs) i'll send you the video because it's it's really funny that's funny actually makes a lot more sense now okay i got a little lost in there (laughs) (laughs) you threw me off i just kept i just kept picturing die hard the whole time (laughs) it's like all right he's talking about sports but i I can't get bruce willis's face out of my head right now (laughs) dude Oh my goodness! Um, what about um? What did, I, what did I ask you earlier? It was um. What was uh? What was the worst like? You asked me like, what was the biggest like train wreck or like technical difficulty? What was what was the biggest one for you guys or like at a, a show or just? Hmm. Whether you're performing or putting on a show. Um, we've definitely had like moments like where like. Like hours before the show, some like somebody has to cancel, and it's like a main person on the show, and you're like, "Oh shit!" <laughs> like you don't even you don't even have enough, have enough time to find a replacement. Um, maybe what show? What, I think it was the first Emporium show that we did, where like the music, the speakers went out, and like we <sighs> like we had like two. No, it was like one match. It was the second show we did. It was the second show. Where the spe- like for some reason the speakers dropped out and then like it was just like no music or or uh, mics for the for that match and then we got it back together, but that was like damn because like we were like oh I don't know if we can fix this at first <laughs> and then it and then it worked out but ah uh, that was uh that was a nightmare <laughs> I remember that day very vividly <laughs> scary every one of my staff was just screaming at me like what do we do and I'm like. I guess we got to go check the amps that I'm trying to, if you watch, actually, if you watch that back, you watch you just like, cause, cause I remember my hair was longer than I have a yellow shirt on and a really bad mullet and you can just see me running back and forth, like absurdly fast, like trying to get moved through people just so I can get to the back room and try to flip the breakers. Oh, <laughs> but it, it ended up get kicking on like almost immediately after. I think there was like, one thing after yeah yeah it wasn't it wasn't a long time that like for the show like in the grand scheme of it but it was like when it happens it's like it feels like it, it's like forever and you're just like oh shit what are we gonna do <laughs> but it was only probably like a couple minutes we ruined your entrance i know that that's <laughs> that's fine if, I, if, <laughs> any, if, if of anybody it was if it was me that's fine yeah like, that's the, I'm, I'm the one i'm the one pass that's fine <laughs> Ooh. um <clears throat> So what uh what kind of shows and stuff do you got coming up? Like what's uh what's your schedule look? I think you posted something recently. I think I saw. Yeah, um so I usually post all my dates on my Instagram obviously most people, but I usually post like a calendar for the entire month and I'll usually tag it at the top like a reel or something. Mm-hmm. Um but then I also have all my dates over at uh my website um bettergoonofficial at gmail, right? No. Bettergoonofficial.com. Sorry, I'm giving my email out. There it is. If you uh, want to book them. <laughs> but uh, no, um, I usually put them all up. Uh, coming up next, uh, I got uh, this Wednesday, I'll be at Giant Penny Whistle in Pilsen. They have a reg- regular Wednesday going over there, all Latin music, which is cool. Ooh. I get to play a bunch of cumbia, a bunch of corridos and stuff that I don't normally get to play on a regular Friday, Saturday night. Uh, so that's really cool. Um, every Friday, I'm at Slippery Slope uh, for Super Friends with Johnny Walker. 
Um, usually on closing out, but as you open it up too, that's free. You can come every Friday. Um, and then uh, outside of that, I have a Saturday. I have Halloween Saturday. I'll be at Sound Bar. Mm. Open up in the basement down there. That one's really cool if you're trying to go really crazy that night. And then uh, <laughs> <laughs> like everyone will be. Um, and then uh, I think I got a couple other random ones here and there, a couple of private events here and there. But, you know, I've been trying to keep busy every Friday and Saturday. But um, I always tell everybody if they ever want to come through, come check it out. Just shoot me a message and let me know ahead of time. Um, it's usually a good time. Sometimes there's covers. Sometimes you can skip it if you're cool and I like you and <laughs> not just trying to get in. Uh, and you buy me a drink or something. Uh, I don't mind telling the door guy that you're cool. So uh, <laughs> hey. that includes you, sir. Oh, well. I think the last time we did that, you were. It was a night that I wasn't there, but then I tried to jump on last minute. <laughs> oh, I, when I, I was at it. Slope. <laughs> yeah, I was like, "Hey, man, uh, you want me to close out for you?" And he's like, "Oh, uh, it's cool." And I'm like, "Dang it!" <laughs> ah. <laughs> I want to just come hang out. That's fun. Yeah, we. I forget what we. Well, well, we were there for uh, one of Nicole's friend's birthdays. We were moving around in the neighborhood. Oh yeah, and we ended up there, and uh, we were well, we were looking for somewhere to go, and I was just like. Let's just go to Slippery Slip, because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> like that'll be fun. that'll be fun. It, it's it's never uh, it's never a dull time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, before we get out of here, thank you again for for making the time to do this. Um, well, where where can anybody uh, find you or get a hold of you on social medias and stuff? I'll make sure to tag it all in the in the descriptions as well. But for the audio listeners, cool. Um, well, thank you again for having me, man. It's really cool. Um, I uh, was gonna ask if this was about your cube but nobody will get that joke. <laughs> so that's between us. Um, but uh, yeah, you can find me, uh, my website, Baragoon Official at, uh, or baragoonofficial.com. And then at Instagram, you can find me at Baragoon Official. Um, post all my dates on there, fun stuff, uh, just normal things. You want to come hang out and uh, yeah, that's where you can find me. Hell yeah. Well, uh, now I want to hear you make a, crazy send me or send me like a one of your favorite mixes and i'll uh i'll play it at the end of the episode sounds good if that's cool I if got you're you cool with that. <laughs> i'm just telling you i'm like telling you I'm, we're gonna play this shit at the end <laughs> it's gonna drop right now <laughs>